and I missed the whole four years out of school. And I think I lost a lot of education because now some of the things we have in school, I have missed it and I have a hard you know, time trying to get it. I knew that the whole thing was wrong. The most important thing was why was it wrong? There was nothing else I could say, but it was wrong, it was wrong, it was wrong. After I got old and after they closed schools, and well, I guess I was more hurt than anything else because, well, I had to leave home, and I've always loved it here, and I just felt bitter. I don't know why. It was just because I guess that's the way they just closed the schools and shut the doors. Prince Edward County, Virginia, the only county in America that closed its public schools rather than integrate them, where Negro and white fought over the interpretation of the Constitution for ten bitter years, where every resident had to decide for himself where the law lay, in court decrees or in his own personal attitudes and beliefs. These children are members of a lost generation. I'm Reverend Griffin, minister of their church, and I know. Sometimes I look at them, and I wonder if the whole struggle was worth it. Because in a sense, what we did to them is undeniable. We sacrificed them to prove they were equal. It's 12 miles from Farmer. Well, I'm not about to sacrifice my children. I mean, I want them to get a good education, but I really believe they can't get a good education in an integrated school. At least not in the South. It just won't work in the South. People in this county got pretty worked up about the school situation. I've watched them. I've known them, nigger and white, all my life. My name is Gordon Moss. I'm a professor of history over at the local college there. And I'm a southerner. Prince Edward County isn't a big place. Only about 14,000 people. It's mainly tobacco country. Farmers here claim the soil is so rich it makes your feet greasy just to walk over it. The county seat is Farmville. We rate about three or four trains a day through here. There used to be more. A weekday in Farmville isn't too different from a weekday in any other southern town. About half our population is Negro, but if you asked anyone how the races got along up until recently, most people would have said that we had no real trouble. Farmville, in fact the whole county, has always had the reputation of being a pretty peaceful place. On Sundays, everyone goes to church. Of course, white folks go to one church, and niggers go to another. That's part of the Southern way of life. It's a life which hasn't really changed much for years one in which I've always participated. 
During most of my life, my attitudes haven't been much different from my neighbors. I'm a historian, and Prince Edward County is rich in historical associations. The Civil War was fought here, and it came to an end here. Not far from my house, at Sailor's Creek, the Confederate Army fought its last battle. A few days later, at a small frame house in Appomattox, General Lee surrendered and the Civil War was over. Except that in a way it wasn't, for the attitudes that bred the war more or less lingered on. This was pretty evident in Farmville even up until a few years ago. For the most part, the Negroes were here to do the hard and dirty work at minimum wages. The whites of the county never thought they mistreated the Negroes. But there was never any question of equality. It just wasn't something to consider as far as the whites were concerned. Schools for the Negroes were inferior in every way. Overcrowding forced many children to attend classes in tar paper shacks. But then, later on in 1953, after considerable pressure from the Negroes, a new high school was built, supposedly equal to the white high school. It was a big change from the old days, the white community thought. But the Supreme Court of the United States thought otherwise. In 1954, in an historic decision, the Brown decision, the court finally spoke out. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Therefore, we hold that the plaintiffs are, by reason of the segregation complained of, deprived of the equal protection of the law guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. The people in my congregation in Farmville were overjoyed by the Brown decision. It was as though the prophecy of Isaiah were being fulfilled. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. Seems we were naive enough to think that once the court had spoken, things would suddenly change. I remember being interviewed right after the Brown decision. I told the interviewer that we had gained a great victory. I didn't realize that it was only the beginning of our struggle. Maybe it'll come someday. But right now, don't hardly seem the time. The Negroes ain't ready. And we sure ain't ready. Like the Bible says, there's a time for everything. Well, I've always gotten along all right with Negroes. Me and Joe here have worked together for years. But uh, having his kids sitting side by side with mine in school, well, that's something else again. Once this whole school business started, things seemed very strange between Bill and I. It was nothing that he said or I could put my finger on. Things were just different. Well, I was just glad for my child. I figure now he'll have any better education than I had. As I look back on it now, it seems that what happened was simple. Half the people in Prince Edward County didn't believe in the spirit of the law. And when that happens, there are a million ways of blocking it. We, the people of Prince Edward County, 
believe that the welfare of both the white and Negro races is best served by their separation in the public schools. The white people drew up and published a declaration of convictions in which they made clear their so-called bedrock position. We affirm our deep and abiding loyalty and devotion to our country and its institutions. We acknowledge the Constitution to be the supreme law of the land and the bulwark of our liberties. But we believe that the Supreme Court has flagrantly exceeded its lawful authority and dangerously encroached upon the reserved rights of the states. We believe that a policy which undertakes to force the association of one race with the other against the will of either is injurious to the true interests of both races. We therefore ask our Board of Supervisors to prohibit any funds for the operation of racially mixed schools to the end that all public schools may be closed if a court order requires the mixing of the races. In 1959, it finally happened. When the courts ordered immediate desegregation that September, Prince Edward did what no county in America had ever done. It closed its public schools. Well, it was strange being out of school and being home. I just didn't understand it, and I guess that's why I just didn't like the way things were going on. Because I didn't understand why everybody couldn't go to school together. We just thought the p people were kidding about it, you know. All the kids always, always are talking about, well, the school's going to close, and maybe the school's going to burn down, <laughs> something like that. But we were having a nice time in school, and... That year when we got out this summer, we were walking home, and all the kids from Odin were talking about it. We never paid much attention to it. We just thought it was just talk. But when they closed schools, it just seemed strange. Our friends started to leave, and some of them moved away, and life just changed a little. Well, it was really pitiful in Farmville if you ever took time to uh, talk to the children. You would see them on the street, and uh, sometimes they would ask you about school. When would the schools open? Those were children that they heard. I could take it for myself, but for the children, to close the doors on the children of Prince Edward County. And some of them are so sweet and so innocent. I can't see how they could do that. If they wanted to take their children out of school, okay. But why close the public schools? That was so mean. Of course, the white parents never thought they were being mean. They just believed they had the right to educate their children any way they saw fit. By stretching the interpretation of an old Virginia law. They could get state tuition grants for each child. So classes were held in movie theaters and churches all over town while they raised money to build a private school. For us, those were the lost years. We tried to teach our children what little we could in church classes, but it was pitifully inadequate. For most of the children during that time, Education just about stood still. I remember the leaders of the white community offered to help us set up private schools the same as they were doing. That way, I guess they figured everything would be equal. But we had already rejected segregated public schools, so why accept segregated oh, private God, schools? Yeah. We turned their offer down. Farmville, Virginia. The Prince Edward case became one of the longest and most complicated in civil rights history. This is Mr. Samuel Tucker, a lawyer from Richmond who argued the cause of the Negro children. 
An actor will present the arguments of the Prince Edward School Board as adapted from the public record. The issue in the Prince Edward litigation, that is, after the schools were closed, were very simple. It was whether or not the Constitution of the United States could permit public schools in Prince Edward County to be closed while the state of Virginia operated public schools in every other city and county in the, in the state. There is no duty imposed upon the states, either by the Brown decision or by the federal constitution, to provide for the education of their people. This is exclusively a subject of state determination. Now, the system operating in Virginia, far from violating the constitution, actually fostered and nourished the liberty protected by the Bill of Rights. It gave parents the freedom to have their children educated in the manner they saw fit and to choose their own associates. <clears throat> this concept of freedom of choice in education was a, an expedient that followed the Brown decision that racial segregation in public education is unconstitutional. Now before the Brown decision, there was no such thing as freedom of choice in education. Public authority told people where to go to school. And public authority in Virginia told Negroes to go to one school and told white people to go to another school. They had no choice. As early as January of 1960, the white citizens of Prince Edward County organized a corporation for the purpose of operating private schools for the Negro children in exactly the same way that education was being made available to the white children. Had the Negro citizens desired in 1960 to cooperate with this move, their children would not have lacked education during those four years. I don't think that anyone pretended or believed that the private schools which would have been set up for Negro children would have been the equal of the private schools set up for the white children. And to suggest that the Negro children of Prince Edward County should have given up their birthright to public education controlled by law and operated at taxpayers' expense and accepted for that an education at the sufferance of voluntary groups, which groups were formed for the purpose of perpetuating that which the struggle was about, segregation in public education. Certainly, for them to have accepted that in the middle of the stream would have been ridiculous. It's very simple. The Supreme Court has prohibited segregation, but it cannot force integration. We submit that the path of compulsion, the path that attempts to force white and colored to associate together, that path is doomed. And not only in the South, but in the entire nation. And while the lawyers argued in the courts, the schools remained shut and the children waited. so long in the court uh, when I talked to my father or something, you know. We'd talk, you know. And he would say year, six months or something like that. You know, nobody wasn't expecting four years. I guess I had something against the law, you know, once it took so long, you know, the gracious. Shouldn't take that long for anything. Some of those kids out of school for the entire four years. But that's what uh, angered me. You mean tell me the government will sit there, the, the, the Supreme Court judge will sit there and linger with the case for four years? I didn't think that was right. Maybe because it took so long, the school crisis forced some of us here in Farmer to re-examine our beliefs. You must remember that I am a Southerner. Segregation was a way of life for my generation, just as it had been for my mother's generation before me. 
But I had a son. What should I advise him? Where should he go to school? We had to decide, and decide quickly, because of a last-minute development in the Prince Edward story. In 1963, while the case was still in court, the school buses suddenly began to roll again. President Kennedy had become concerned at the plight of the Negro children. Under the Constitution, the federal government was powerless to act. But the Attorney General personally backed a drive to raise a million dollars from private sources. The free schools of Prince Edward County, open to Negro and white, were established. Volunteers came from all over the nation. There were ungraded classes, remedial reading, field trips, and dramatics and art classes. The free schools lasted a year. Only six white children attended. One of them was my son, Richard Moss. It was his decision, and I was mighty proud of him. It's not easy for a Southerner born and bred to change on the racial question. It took me, I reckon, maybe 60 years. Before the school crisis, I'd never had to come to terms with my beliefs. But when the schools were closed, I knew that I couldn't live with myself unless I fought it. And I was grateful that my son was on the same side. In May 1964, the Supreme Court finally spoke. There has been entirely too much deliberation and not enough speed in enforcing the constitutional rights which we held ten years ago had been denied Prince Edward Negro children. Closing the Prince Edward schools and meanwhile contributing to the support of private segregated white schools denied petitioners the equal protection of the laws. Relief needs to be quick and effective. (laughs) September 1964. Five years after they had closed, the public schools were open again. The white citizens of Prince Edward had lost their battle. Or had they? This is an integrated classroom in Prince Edward County. public high school, now officially integrated. Not far up the road from the public high school, the private Prince Edward Academy holds its prom. ruling, more than 99% of the white children of the county attend private school. When the Supreme Court wrote Brown and struck down racial segregation in public education, it wrote it in terms so simple that a child can understand it. Well, the law may have made us open up the schools, but it can't make us send our kids to them. No law is going to change the way we think. Don't they realize it doesn't matter how many laws are made? Where do they think the law lies anyway? In law books or in people's attitudes? <laughs> 